Now, the other part, the right part of the chart, are symbols. What can we do with all these symbols? There are approximately 335 symbols there. Each line, of course, is an individual strategy. There are 30 strategies currently in the Hall of Fame for ETFs only. So the first thing I did with this 335 strategies, excuse me, symbols, I thought, well, let's sort them and see what we get. Here's a sorting in alphabetical order of all of the 335, yeah, 335 total symbols. So you can see, for a couple of them, we have just two. For some, like BAL, we have several. DBA, we have several. EEM is several. So I then took this sorted list and say, OK, what are the most frequent or popular symbols that you find in our strategies in the ETF area? Would you believe that gold is in 21 of the 30 strategies? So we love gold. A lot of people have put GLD <laughs> in their strategies. So we go down here. So tw uh, 20, uh, 20 times the XLE symbol shows up in the, the strategies, and so forth and so on down. And then less than five, there's some that's two, three, four, some more with five. So I thought, well, gee, there must be something cooking here if we have so many of these symbols in the 30 strategies. It could be gaming. A lot of us like to copy from someone else. We could be gaming to drive up our return. And I thought, well, these seem to be good. So what can I do now with this list? What I said, why not the, take the 12 most popular ETFs that we've identified and put them into a strategy and see what we get. They're the most popular, so maybe there's something behind it. So what I did, I created a strategy called SSJ, which is Sector Surfer Joe, Favorite ETF <coughs> Symbols is the name of the strategy. And then I ran it. It was born yesterday, so it's a new farm. <laughs> 3.1 trades <laughs> per year, that's not too bad. Last week, the strategy, we're down 1.6% versus 0.30. So this strategy last week did more poorly. Last month, it only did 1.9% versus 4% for the S&P. However, when we look over the last half a year, six months, the strategy gave us 28% versus 9.3 for the S&P. And looking at since the last trade, we have 25% versus 8. The probability of loss for this strategy is 2.8 compared to the S&P, which is 39.5. The sharp ratio is 1 versus only 0 0.07. The drawdown, once again, it is 22%. S&P has been 55%. That's the max drawdown. The real drawdown has been currently at 15%. If you look at this here, these are the returns, the annual return percentages for each of the years. It's been in existence about 13 years, started in 1999. What's impressive to me, there's only one year, based on this, that we had a loss. It's less than 1% loss out of all these years. And on the S&P side, we had four years. I looked at the co uh, com comparison for all years, the strategy returned 31% per year. Some of us would be happy with 31% uh, per year. Were all those ETFs <coughs> back in 1999? No. 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 GLD these, was no. for sure. No, these uh, they adjusted us. It, it did adjust for what was what was the variable back Just leaves then. it out. Just, yeah, it leaves it just out. Just the best. Right, just the right, right, leaves it out. Yep, leaves it out. As long as there's out. one symbol standing. It there's another it's part, which I did not put in spine. here, that shows you what symbol it was yeah, in SPY. at SPY. all SPY. times during this 13 or so years. And I thought that would probably drive you nuts to show you that. But it, it's available. 
So on most of these years, you look, look at the comparison. In 10 years, 35% versus 8 if you're in S&P, 28% versus 5, 59%. Now there are a few years where it did less. But there you are two years. Here's one, 2009. You could pair trade that. Be really <laughs> you probably could pair trade. Short the S&P and only the strategy. Yeah. Uh, in, in 2008. I'd be happy with a 5% return instead of minus 37% return. Oh, yeah. Joe, did you get a list of the actual trades? Yes. You did? Okay. Yes. I did, did not put it in this presentation. No, I understand. What what ETFs were available back in that early 2000-1999 time frame? Probably. Uh, yeah, I, I don't not, know. Not I'd now. have to. I, don't, I didn't memorize yeah, it. Yeah. No. But the printout, the lower part of the printout will show you yeah. each symbol that it was in from the time it entered to the time it went out right. And uh, just to, uh, so when we get a trade, uh, like with ETFs, it assumes that you're getting the open price of the next day. You get, a you know, 10 p.m., the system says buy gold. So that it assumes that we're getting open or the closing price of the next day? I thought it was closed. John, could you verify that for me? I think, it I think it's the close, but I think it's also when you acknowledge the trade. When you acknowledge the trade. So, if you don't acknowledge the trade, I don't think it won't be accurate. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Here's a part of the, the top part of the listing. Like I said, I didn't go all the way back to 1999, but more recently, you can see what it has been in. Uh, several of these, you know, several times here, it was in for about a month. Well, it's really more than uh, a month. But also, what's interesting, it started at $10,000 and it became $465,000 based on this metric, using this strategy. So I would be happy over the, over the 10 years. 10,000 and get half a million. Since, since 1999? Yes, since 1999. Uh, the lower part here, which is not presented, it starts always at ten thousand dollars. Here's the chart to give you a quick look. Uh, I think everyone knows, but they, this is the sector surfer line right here. The white is the S and P, and of course these are all color coded to the various ETFs that are in here. The three of them that are, are red, the rest of them are green. The best at this time is the home construction. You see here also, there's quite a divergence. They're not correlated, all the different funds. And it's one of the things that we enjoy talking about. Is it better to have a cor cor correlated uh, strategy, a symbol, or non-correlated? And I think the consensus thus far has been a non-correlated, but we could debate that. Well, I don't think that graph is indicative of correlation. That's a drawdown graph. Well, I mean, it's the probability of loss or return. I, I wouldn't, it's not really, not really a correlation. Uh, okay, can you then explain, John, what does this mean? Why the what does it mean when this box is close to 20%? Well, the, just read it off the graph, right? The bottom is this, this chance of a 15% loss in one year. Yes. And then the left-hand side is the average annual return. But that's not quite correlation. Correlation is a different thing than just saying they have similar characteristics as far as the probability of a 15% loss. Okay. But maybe another way of asking when they're spread out like this, what is that telling us? Well, on the left-hand side, it's just telling me that you have a range, of, I can't read it, but you have a range of annual returns between 0% and 20%, right? And it's estimating the probability of a 15% loss at around 35% for most of the returns, right? And that's just what the graph says. Okay. But that's not correlation. If you look at the chart, you look at the funds, they're all pretty on the Thank you, John. On the annualized return, shows 60% over the last three years. 
Safety score is one for the score is 142. Safety is 26. Uh, over here, the drawdown, max drawdown in a 10-year period is 22 percent. And of course, the S&P is 55. So there's a lot of information available for us to, to use. Based on this presentation, we can see that there is a lot of data available that you can draw on and review, check out. As a reminder, we only looked at one tab in the Hall of Fame. For six, we used ETF only. So there are five other tabs of 20, 30 or, or so uh, strategies that you can look at. I know some people prefer individual stocks where the risk and reward are a lot higher higher risk, but you get a larger reward. I think the score performance does a pretty good job of identifying the strategies that we might want to look at. Uh, as I mentioned, when you see a 0% probability of a 15% loss, I think the red flag should go up and say, is this really accurate? And like I say, I think with John's presentation tonight, we'll hear more about that. And the same for a 0% strategy drawdown. They have no drawdown. Uh, it's questionable. Many strategies, as we've seen, use the same symbol. As much as 20, 21, 17, all have the same symbols in them, or at least several of the same symbols. However, you can use your favorite strategies to create another strategy, favorite symbols. I think there's a lot more data mining opportunities in Sector Surfer. I'm going to leave it up to you to check it out and see what you can find. I'm going to make a, a copy of this presentation available. Don't know if we'll have the audio or not. Uh, if and when we can figure out how to get large files out to users We'll send this out. Our next meeting, as you probably already seen, is April the 8th. So I hope you can attend that one. Any other questions before we wrap this one up?